The NBFC sector in India started facing issues in fundraise post the default by IL and FS, a wholesale NBFC involved in infrastructure lending in late August 2018, and the subsequent downgrade of its credit rating from AAA to junk. The risk concerns of investors were further aggravated when short-term paper of another AAA-rated housing finance company was sold by a mutual fund at substantial discount in the secondary market for want of liquidity for the investor on account of default by IL and FS. While the origination of the problem has been on the liability side, subsequently there was a contagion effect on the asset side as well, where concerns were raised on certain asset portfolios such as real estate exposure, loans against property, loans against shares, etc. of NBFCs. In the aftermath, some of the market trends observed post the default include constrained liquidity and higher risk aversion among capital market investors to take NBFC exposures, greater discretion in fund flows where bank financing continues to flow to larger, better rated NBFCs, pricing up anywhere between 50 bips to 250 bips across the rating spectrum of NBFCs, increased use of asset sell-down as a source of funds for NBFCs. The crisis brought forth the over-reliance on short-term funds by some NBFCs and HFCs as a source to fund long-term assets. The problem was chronic in large NBFCs compared to smaller to mid-sized entities given their positive ALM mismatches and lower dependency on money market funding. The usage of commercial papers in the past helped larger NBFCs in reducing the cost of borrowing, leading to superlative growth. Post demonetization, NBFCs were also hesitant to source long-term funding, eyeing falling interest rates. With the commercial paper market drying up due to mutual funds redemption pressure, refinancing risk has become higher and NBFCs are forced to roll over long-term funding at much higher rates. This is expected to negatively impact credit growth and profit margins in coming quarters. Many entities have already tapered disbursement and are conserving liquidity and capital to tide over further stress. Coming to the regulatory side, the RBI has brought in a few measures to trigger increased bank liquidity to NBFCs by permitting partial guarantees for NBFC issued bonds, assigning differential risk weights for NBFCs based on external credit ratings, and allowing banks to lend up to 15% of their capital funds to a single non-infra funding NBFC from earlier 10% threshold. Further, RBI has released a draft guideline on tightening the liquidity risk management frameworks for NBFCs, including core investment companies, in May to comprehensively address all the challenges and initiate wider reforms. We will go into the details of this regulation and its implications in subsequent videos.